here, this is a properly appropriate film reviews episode 8 I think and this one was recommended by Ashley Gerard or is it Gerard? I'll go with Gerard it was, sounds better to me and it's uh, 1986's Trick or Treat directed by Charles Martin Smith I remember mostly from The Untouchables he played Agent Oscar Wallace um, he, he's the old bald guy uh, uh, he's been in like a couple of episodes of The Exiles uh, stars Mark Price of uh, Family Ties. He's a guy called Eddie Weinbauer. Uh, he got, gets called Ragman, and he's obsessed with this uh, this rock singer, this uh, Sammy Kerr. And um, he writes letters to him, and he's posters all over his wall. He's a total metalhead in high school, and uh, he's obsessed with the singer. He, so one day he's uh, at the start of the film, he's listening to his music on his personal stereo, it's the 80s, so he's listening to his little tape player, um, and uh, he sees the TV on while he's making his breakfast, but he can't hear anything because he's got his headphones on. And uh, oh, he's enjoying the interview, and now he takes his headphones off and he sees the interview with Sammy Kerr, who was, who was a hellraiser, maybe on the, the likes of Ozzy Osbourne or something. So he kind of cheer on and say, yes, you know, he's, he's giving... The, the guys during the interview said, you know what, ah, you know, kind of, fuck the kids, I'm going to get it, he's like one of these guys, you know, who put your heads off a bat and shit. And uh, he, uh, during the kind of cheering him on in the interview, he notices he died in a fire, kind of mysterious circumstances. And during this news article, they get this, this kind of protest on, and said, oh, rock music is bad, you know, he kind of deserted that kind of thing. And then it comes up at the end, uh, when it says he died at 38, <laughs> the picture put up, the put up with him, it was pretty funny, you know, like, in memory of, the picture of the film was pretty funny. Uh, so the, this guy's devastated, this is the start of the film, and he's devastated, and he goes apeshit, and he tears down all his posters, all his Judas Priest, his Anthrax posters, Crocus and all of this, I think Crocus is except and all that, he rips down all these posters. And, um, except, he's got this flag of, um, Sammy Kerr, the guy that just died, and but he can't bring himself to pull that down. He's like, nah, he can't do it. I should also add that the music in this is done by a band called Fastway. And I'd never heard of them before. Uh, it's made by Fast Eddie Clark, who is a guitarist from Motorhead. And a guy called Pete Way from, uh, he was the bass player of UFO. He's not with them now. I uh, don't know if he's dead or not, I didn't check that up. And yeah, the music plays throughout it and it gives it that kind of, the rhythm for the film. It goes so well with the film. It's really, really good. This band's music also plays as Sammy Kerr's music, which I'll go into later on. After that, he's kind of down in the dumps about his, you know, hero dying. He visits a DJ played by Gene Simmons called DJ Nuke, and he gives them this, this record. And it's the very final recording made by Sammy Kerr. And it's not just that, it's also the only copy, the only copy in existence. And it's the, the acid tape. He says, why well, is this record heavy? He says, because it's the master tape. He says, you have it as a present. He says, you're this, you know, he was that big a fan. He says, you have it. He says, he would have wanted you to have it. So he takes the record. And DJ Nuke promises he's made a copy of the record. And he promises to play the tape at midnight on Halloween as a kind of a farewell thing. And so Eddie goes home. He, he go chills out in his room, as most people do, kind of when they're feeling down. And they put their music on full blast. And he kind of gets this image of uh, Sammy, you know, who was in a uh, devil worship and I, sees him in the middle of the pentagram with all the flames. And he wakes up, the, the new record that keeps on stuttering. So he plays it backwards, he gets messages. And he gets told to start doing things, like the bullies at school. He's, he's badly bullied at school for being a, a metalhead and being kind of weird. So one of the things I was going to say about this film is that it does tend to kind of go into cliches such as, you know, the pool party. But the pool party is actually, he gets invited to the pool party. So he goes to this pool party that's actually in the high school pool. So uh, he, get, he gets he gets kind of pushed around by the school bully, Tim. He's like, oh, you know, fuck you, who are you, think you hey, are, you know, you, oh, you, you metalhead, you know, And uh, so the, 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 the um, like a trophy in his backpack and the pushman in the pool where he nearly drowns but he's rescued by the, the girl he, he likes when he, he, he goes away in a huff so when he's walking out she tries to kind of console him like, oh do you know what you know they, but the guys are assholes he says do you know what you set me up you, you know you invited, you invited me to this pool party you just to you know play with my feelings all the rest of it and he walks away with his squidgy shoes which is pretty funny quite like that so 
back to the point. That's when he goes and listens to his new album. When it starts skipping, he plays it backwards. He gets messages telling him to get revenge on his bullies. You know, it's like the underdog getting back at, you know, those who've hurt him. At the start, kind of, it's kind of a little playful. It's like, there's a part where he throws food on you know, the lunch hall. Yeah, he throws the, the food on the, the bully and searches them. And, you know, we're going to kill you. And, uh, He's, he's laid out some traps with chairs and that sort of falling down the corridor, tripping over chairs and tables and that. And it's quite funny when they're, they're, they're chasing through the library, they're trying to sneak through, trying to sneak through, so they don't be too much on them, they're half running. That was quite funny. So to, later on, to get revenge, they, they get detention. The, the bullies get detention for uh, spraying a uh, fire extinguisher foam on uh, some teachers, thinking that Eddie was in there, the ragman, they thought he was in there. Uh, but he wasn't, he was in the room across the hall. So, the next day, he's listening to his music. He's quite a loner, he's only got the one the one friend, Roger. So he, he's listening to his music and the guy catches up on him, he says, yeah, he says, I'm going to get revenge for what you've done. He says, he's we had to, you'll so be surprised you find under, under desks. <laughs> Probably just being a shitload chewing gum. He's listening to his music and he's getting... As usual, bullied for it. He's like, how can you listen to this shit? So the guy, the, the, the bad guy, Tim, Billy, he's throwing uh, spanners at his head and he's, and he's ducking and he gets thrown across the floor and then the music starts to react because the soul of Sammy is in this tape. He's recorded the tape. So the soul of Sammy that was in this record is actually in the tape that he's recorded. Things start to react. He locked his head in this kind of vice thing and the drill bit. Do you think it was a drill bit? I uh, like a drill bit is going towards his head and um, as the, the bad guy Tim is kind of shaking in fear he stops it right in the last minute and then he runs away saying yeah he says you've won this time he said but we'll be back for you now if that were me you know if I was getting a drill bit called towards me he said like, you know you win never again see you later bye but the more he plays these recordings the revenge gets kind of worse and worse. The start of that is when Tim and his girlfriend are in the car. You know, you get the lookout points, you know, the, the make-out points. You know, you get in America and they're, you know, making out and all the rest of that. But really have sex. I should have mentioned, he gets the tape as a gift, even though he, he doesn't like the music. So I don't know why he accepted the tape, but he accepted the tape anyway and he kept it in his car. So when he's in the car, goes to the toilet and leaves his girlfriend for a minute. And the girlfriend decides to kind of chill out and listen to the music. It's the, the demonic tape and it starts uh, taking off her clothes and having sex with her, this demon. Yeah, at first you just think, you don't know what's happening. You just see this kind of goo and it taking her clothes off. And it's like she's masturbating. But then it turns out you just, when she wakes up, you see the, the demon and her ears are melted off of the headphones. She ends up in hospital. And that's the start of it. She almost died, so she ends up in hospital. As things go on, the demon of Sammy starts kind of trying to uh, get out of the, the record and into the real world. It plays on his, Eddie's friend Roger and tells him to play this tape at the high school disco, the, the, the Halloween disco, so he can come out and terrorise the kids. So he does, and uh, Eddie says, stop it. While he's trying to do that, he plays the tape and he comes out and he gets his revenge. He's up with some lightning and the guy Eddie tries to stop it. And up until this point, his girlfriend, I say girlfriend very lately, what was her name? Uh, Leslie. She's hardly in it until like the last 20 minutes of the film where she's, you know, running away from Sammy and all the rest of it who's in the real world, electrifying people and even electrocuting people, you know, killing them. So Eddie decides it's time to get rid of the tape once and for all. While he was playing the, the, the tape in the car, he drives into the river and he dies. Right, so that was just a quick summary. I want to get into the pros and cons of this film. And first of all, it's got the tagline. It says, Hilarious tale of rock and roll gone bad. The other tagline is, A deadly obsession turns into spine tingling horror. Now, hilarious tale is a, a hilarious tale is not that funny. And for spine tingling horror, it's not that scary. It uh, is an entertaining film. I genuinely enjoyed it. The music of Fastway helps with this a lot. It's quite like the 80s band Wasp, who I think are maybe still going. I like a lot of heavy rock and metal, so I like a lot of 80s stuff as well. It's quite like this band. It's quite fast and it goes really good with the film and moves it along quite fast. Another couple of things I wanted to say was, if you look at the, the poster for the American, the American poster, it's got Ozzy Osbourne, Gene Simmons and Mark Price. 
Yeah. All my places are C as well, same as my name. Um, C. <laughs> I don't know that way. It the colour says it that way. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a realm, and I'll be editing out. Um, no, I'll keep it in. <laughs> keep that's, it that's in. Deal. <laughs> um, yeah, now, Gene Simmons is in it for about two minutes. I think of him looking like this, but he actually looks like this in the film. Uh, and same with Ozzy Osbourne, who's in it for about a minute. You know, he's, he's heavily credited on the US poster, and you think of him looking like this, or this, he actually looks like this in the film. Also, uh, although I don't find it scary when he's reversing the music, I've got a horrible, I want to say a phobia, but I am genuinely disturbed by backwards music. Not when it comes to vocals. I'll show you a clip. And that's from a video game I used to watch my dad playing when we were kids. It's Trivial Pursuit, the, the computer game for the Commodore 64. And the, just the music of this was always backwards and distorted in certain questions and it used to really freak me out. Now I've recently got a Commodore 64 and I have this game and I recently played this. That's how I took the video. And <laughs> it still freaks me the fuck out. <laughs> And it's the scariest thing about the film, and it's not even really that scary. The effects are really good in it when he brings Sammy back to life. The effects are really, really good. It's got some good jokes in it, you know, like where they're sneaking through the, the corridor and that. That's, that's, quite, that's quite funny. It's not hilarious, it's not terrifying, but it's, it's, it's enjoyable. It's very enjoyable. I, I, I would watch it again. Well, I have watched it again. I've watched it twice for this review. You don't have to like rock or heavy metal to like this film. It, it's a genuinely fun film to watch. Uh, another thing is, it's rated 18 over here in the UK, which is kind of somewhere in between R and NC-17 in America, I think that's the only way to describe it, but I think you could easily get away with like a 15 rating nowadays, easily, because that version I've got is, it's like a VHS rip to DVD, but it's like a, like a bootleg almost. It would have been a 12 if it hadn't been for some swearing and that in it, and maybe a picture of boobs. You would you hardly see it, you know, it's like, boobs, 18. Yeah, I'm a day, it's got PG. Yeah, <laughs> penis is all over Yeah, that. penis is a boozer. Tits, PG. When the violence happens, when Sammy Kerr comes out and uh, does his, his revenge and tries to start killing people, it's very tame. He electrocutes people, all you see is like explosions. Them kind of spontaneously combusting. And there's no blood, there's no gore in the film. Even when the drill bit's going towards the guy's head near the start of the film, nothing really graphic happens. So I'm really surprised the BBFC could go out in 18. It doesn't make any sense to me. When Sammy gets resurrected at the Halloween dance, he's lip syncing to a Fastway song. You know the actor, Tony Fields? He's the guy that plays Sammy Kerr. And he's lip syncing badly really really badly you don't see it for very long eh? i've got to say but it's the one thing that really i thought do you know what that's badly done it's really badly done they could have made that a little bit better but all in all it's a good film i'd give it maybe a six out of ten i want to thank you ashley for the recommendation thanks a lot for scaring the shit out of me with backwards music and i'll hopefully see everyone in the next review soon bye thank you so much for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it if you did, please subscribe if you haven't already. I apologise for some of the audio problems earlier in the video. I had some technical issues. If you have an idea for a film you'd like me to review in the future, please mention so in the comments. I make a note of every single suggestion that's made, and remember, it doesn't have to be a horror-related film. I'm up for almost anything, as you probably saw from my notebook review. So have a nice day, guys, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. See you.